guys, I'm Willie Sandry. Today I want to talk to you about three really neat upgrades you can make to your Laguna 1412 bandsaw. First modification is this custom everyday fence that can work interchangeably with the tall resaw fence that came with your saw. Second mod is this permanently attached small alchemy table. Third mod is adding a secondary port for a really excellent dust collection on your Laguna bandsaw. So, these are the mods we're going to look at in detail, so check it out. So the first mod we're going to look at is this custom everyday fence. It attaches to the same knuckle and fence hardware that came with your saw. And because of that, it makes it interchangeable with the tall resaw fence. I like this low fence uh, for some applications, for a lot of things actually, because it will slide under the guide assembly in more cases than the tall resaw fence would. And that's a safety issue for me. You want to expose as little of the blade as possible when you're making your cut. If you do have to do some resawing, why then you can still use the tall resaw fence. Just a matter of loosening up the two factory knobs, and sliding the fence off, and you can take a look what you have. On the back side, we've got a double track that accepts both uh, miter track hardware and T-track hardware. The T-track on the back is actually not used, it's the miter track that you're after. On the front, there is a single quarter inch T-track and that is used for accessories like these little stop locks. We've got a small rubber knob from Rockler and a groove milled on it. Um, and so that's a nice way to make notches. I find myself doing a lot of uh, seat frames for chairs and uh, those typically get a half inch by half inch notch on the back side. And so the stop lock and T-track is a really repeatable way to make accurate cuts on the bandsaw. So other than that, the, the fence is just a lamination of three pieces of hardwood. I just used ash and, and walnut. But um, putting the laminate on there I think just kind of adds a finishing touch and it'll give it a wear surface that should last a long time. So if you're going to install the everyday fence, um, you need to switch from the factory bar that you saw came with to these little miter track nuts that you can get at Woodcraft. And they'll be oriented like this to use your everyday fence. And so you can just slide them on just like so. Go ahead and lock your fence in with the two knobs. And then you'd be, you'd be uh, ready to go for your everyday fence. If you wanted to switch that out for the tall resaw fence, To use the same hardware, you just have to orient the little miter nuts um, sideways. Make sure they're loosened enough that they can be good. Yeah, so you just orient them sideways and they'll just slide right on there. You need to go this way for the uh, restock fence. And then you're back in business if you want to do taller resaw work. Just like so. So I thought that was an advantage to not have to actually change out any hardware to switch back from one fence to the other. So there you have it. There's the everyday fence for your Laguna. So the second modification is this small outfeed table for the Laguna bandsaw. It's about eight inches deep and it's built from MDF. The top layer is one inch thick MDF and the bottom layer is half inch thick MDF. It's got a T molding that helps finish things off and a a little groove that's plowed to accept the miter gauge. And the important thing to note about this is the outfeed table does not interfere with table tilting, either left or right. It does not interfere with blade changes, and it does not interfere with dust collection. So 
this outfeed table is really one of those things you can just bolt on and leave on for most operations. It's really helpful for catching the outfeed side of a board. If it's two, three, three and a half feet long, it works really well. And you may find that you don't even need a, a outfeed roller support anywhere. This is enough to do the trick. It attaches with bed bolts. I used a kit from McFeely's and they're just drilled through the table and into the MDF. I'll go ahead and uh, pull the table off and we'll uh, show you how it attaches. Okay, so here's a look at the underside of the outfeed table. It just attaches with bed bolts, which is just a simple kit of a length of threaded rod. These are 5 16 inch rod. Nuts, lock washer, and then a plate style washer, which is really important to mount to the saw. This will go on the other side of the cast iron for a nice sturdy connection. The only thing I had to source separately were these barrel nuts. And this is going to attach to the other end. Basically just drop the barrel nut in place there. And then you can go ahead and insert your threaded rod. Once you have all three of those in, you just flip it over and bolt it to your table. This little wrench from McFeely's is really the thing to have to tighten those home. But just make sure when you're setting the table that it's either flush with the table or slightly lower than the table. You don't want anything to hang you up as you're feeding work pieces over the saw. But if you're flush or slightly lower than flush, it really works well. So the third mod I'd like to look at is upgrading the dust collection to the Laguna bandsaw. And basically the factory port is a four inch port that comes in right here. It does a pretty decent job of keeping the lower cabinet clean, but it doesn't actually develop any suction above the table. And uh, to fix that problem, what I had to do was add a splitter. So the four inch line continues on and it adds a two and a half inch at the Y. From there we go down and we feed a blast gate and that's just attached with rare earth magnets to the cabinet and it goes up and feeds the new port under the saw. So we'll show you how that attaches to the saw and then give you a little demonstration. So here you can see the new dust port that we've added under the saw. And basically to pull it off, all you have to do is just open the lower door and then just pull it right off. It's attached with rare earth magnets here and here. And I specifically put those in a position where you wouldn't be fighting the magnets. Uh, there's no uh, magnet against metal contact until right at the end where you want them to hold the dust port in position. So this is just made of three pieces of plywood. There's a little bit of shaping involved. And then just a standard two and a half inch dust port is added. And all the dimensions for this will be linked below and they're posted over at lumberjocks.com. But the nicest thing about this is it's really easy to put back on. You just slide it back in position and the magnets hold it in place. Just close your door and you're ready to go. For it to come back off, you do have to open the door and it'll just slide right back off. So that will have to come off. You pull the dust port off for blade changes or to angle the table. But other than that, it's really worth it to improve the dust collection so you're not breathing the sawdust. So there's two other aspects to the dust collection mod. One is just a port blocker that you'll need to install. Just a piece of plywood. It's uh, six and a half inches or six inches tall, five and a half inches wide, and it's got some rare earth magnets on the back. And basically that will just block part of the port off so that you can really increase suction right around the blade. This is the area we want to concentrate suction 
the original factory setup has this whole area open and there's just nothing sealed in the lower cabinet so we really wanted to improve suction right in this area and that's exactly what this mod does that little bit of plywood is held in place with four magnets and then the final piece of the dust collection mod is this foam that lives under the table and basically what it does is it blocks any air infiltration from the back side and creates an effective suction box right around the blade. So this is really a key component to the dust collection and to install it or remove it just tip your table up and you can pull it on out. We'll have a better look at that. Okay so here's the foam insert that goes under the table and it sits like this. It does have a wedge shape to it. Dimensions are listed in a link to Lumberjocks there. Underside does have a couple of partial holes drilled to sit up over the adjustment bolts that are under the trending assembly. But basically this just started out as a foam kneeler pad. If you're going shopping for one, that's what you're looking for. Available at Harbor Freight. It's just a very dense kneeler pad. And to make the angled cuts, you can actually use your bandsaw. And this little insert is durable, and it works great to improve dust collection. To reinstall the foam under the table, just slide it in place right over the bolt holes, and then lower the table in place. Okay, we'll give you a little demonstration of the dust collection. As we start the cut, and the wood enters the blade, we'd expect to see a little sprinkling of sawdust on top of the table. But once the blade is trapped in the cut, uh, we notice that the dust collection is really quite good. Here we go. the quality of the cut really good using the Laguna Pro Force blade really nice even cut but also if you guys have ever run a bandsaw without any dust collection you know how much dust is produced by a cut like this and all we see is a tiny sprinkling that's just from entering the cut once the blade is trapped in the cut dust collection is excellent I'm not breathing dust when I'm working I'm not dealing with the dust in the lower cabinet. It's really just been a wonderful solution to all the dust collection problems I've had on previous bandsaws. So go over to Lumberjocks, get the plans, take a look. I'll look for the link below and see if this is a mod you want to try with your saw. Happy woodworking.